to the 2024 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. Uh, excited to have these four gentlemen join us to talk about the championship this weekend. Um, as with the previous two sessions, I would ask all media for the benefit of the coaches just to introduce yourself by name and outlet before you ask a question. Um, and if time remains, after questions from the media uh, in the room, we'll open it to questions from Zoom if there are any. Um, but we're certainly happy to welcome uh, and then what gentlemen each of you all ask you to do is um, begin with some opening comments about your expectations for uh, this weekend and maybe reflections on the season up to this point. Uh, and, and we'll start here with Mike Smith from Northern Arizona and then we'll, he'll be followed by Wes Kitley of Texas Tech, Mike Holloway of Florida, and Chris Johnson of Arkansas. Michael Smith, uh, Director of Track and Field, Northern Arizona. Excited to be at the Track and Field press conference. That means we're doing a good job. Uh, usually uh, it's the cross country teams and see us up here. Really excited to have a well-rounded uh, track and field team heading into the championships. Uh, thrilled to be in Boston. I don't get to compete here uh, at the national level very often. So very excited uh, to be here in this facility. Looking forward to a great weekend of competition. Wes Kitley, uh, Texas Tech University. Same here, very excited to be here in Boston. I've not been here before with the team. Uh, we've had a really good year so far. Uh, we were very fortunate, had a good Big 12 championship. We kept people pretty healthy all year long, and so we're uh, looking forward to a really uh, big meet this weekend, and I uh, hope we have a chance. Mike Holloway, University of Florida. Uh, we we're blessed to be here. We've had a great season. Uh, we just try to do what we always do and just kind of build throughout the year and be ready when it counts the most. And, this is when it counts the most, so we're looking to a great weekend and great performances, not just by the Gators, but by, by everybody here. Chris Johnson, University of Arkansas, Winter Track and Field. Uh, excited to be in Boston. What a wonderful city, a wonderful facility that we have here to go out and compete. Our team is doing fantastic. Uh, they've worked hard all year long to get to this point. So we're excited about the opportunity to go out here and compete against the very, very best in the country. And we're looking forward to this championship. Open it to questions of the media. Go ahead. Question for Coach Chris. Um, first off, the backs line, getting a chance to be leading Arkansas um, at the NCAAs here. Um, just curious about how the transition and change has been kind of taking the helm at Arkansas this year. Transition's been good. I mean, obviously, there's a lot to learn and, and going about being actually the head coach, but been in Arkansas for 12 years now, so it seems seamless in, 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 a lot of, in a lot of ways, but uh, excited about it. Excited about being a uh, first year coach and being in the national championships, ranked number one, and obviously a lot comes with that, but uh, the transition's been good. The, the athletes have bought into the program and they're excited, and we're excited as well, and have a great staff, and, and they kept me grounded and kept me on task, so we're looking forward to it. Like follow up. How does it feel to get a chance to work with your brother um, now at Arkansas? Well, known him my whole life, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Uh, obviously, a dream come true for me, and I think as well as for him to be able to have the opportunity to work together. And obviously, he's a great coach and has been doing it for some time, so it helps me out a lot. And we work closely together as it pertains to sprints and hurdles. So you know, you, you couldn't dream of a better story than being with your brother at a prestigious school like Arkansas. Uh, this is John from the City of Smitty. This is for Mike Smith. So how does your approach to competing and this mindset perspective, I guess, change from cross-country nationals to you know, indoor track nationals? Yes, I would say uh, entirely similar. We are uh, always putting team performance in front of individual performances. Um, just looking at how we can band together our assets to score the most points as possible. Um, Typically, we're coming to this meet with a strong distance contingent. We're thrilled to bring uh, triple jumper Mitchell Effing, uh, weight thrower Garrett Burnt here, as well as a distance medley relay. So it's been uh, feeling like much more of a rounded out, uh, real team competition here, which is what we uh, aspire to do. Um, you know, the, the thing we've learned through the years in national championships and cross countries is that anything can happen at championships. Crazy things happen here. Um, and so much of it is about the mindset that the athletes have around competing for, for a team. When you're competing for something bigger than yourself, as soon as uh, yeah, something goes, goes wrong, um, you, know, you always have something to fall back for. If you're not competing for something bigger than yourself, 
uh, in a championship when anything happens, uh, that's when it's easy to, to check out, feel sorry for yourself. So our, our athletes uh, know what this is all about. John Anderson, ESPN. Uh, Mike, so how do you go about sorting it out? Because in cross country, here's your seven guys are all run the same distance. How do we sort out where you want to put them? And then they don't have quite that same team dynamic when they step on the track. How do you approach that with those kids? Yeah, we just do an analysis of where we think we can uh, maximize our point totals. Uh, we also yeah, do a deep analysis for competition, what we think our um, competitors will do across different events. Um, our entries this weekend are yeah, devised to score those most points as possible in championships. Uh, Ashley Titchens with Flow Track. This question for Coach Kitley. Um, you alluded to this in your opening remarks, but your men's program is coming off of a, a huge performance at Big 12s. What have you been telling your guys, you know, in those weeks since then, leading up to these championships, and um, you know, helping them remain confident and you know, focused on the job here in Boston? Yeah, number one is don't change anything. Uh, I tell them to do what got them here, and that's what they're going to hear tonight at the team meeting. Uh, you know, it's so. Uh, we, we all know it's a national championship. Uh, I'm going to tell them to fill up lanes for tomorrow. That's going to be number one. And uh, they know what they've got to do. And I think uh, we don't need to change anything. It's like I say, we've been very fortunate to stay healthy. And I think we're coming into this meet as healthy as we've been all year. And uh, we don't need to look, make it any bigger than, than it is. Uh, Dale Bryan, uh, ESPN. Uh, Coach Holloway, just miraculous. I'm not sure I've seen anything like it, but um, great start in the in the in the hurdles and, and the 60. Um, her recovery from that injury is is nothing short than miraculous. What what have, what have been your thoughts over the last year? How was she able to recover to this level? Because that that's an injury that maybe you don't compete at this level again. Yeah, I mean, obviously when it first happened, it was concerning. But you know, Grace is one of the most driven people I've ever been in my life. Uh, we have a phenomenal medical staff, you know, training room staff, strength staff, uh, Matt and Lancey in the weight room, you know, other ones in our crew in the, in the training room, and everybody's just been a, a, a vital part of it. And I think the biggest thing with Grace was she has a lot of faith, and she just, she never gave up. And every day she'd come out and she'd work hard, and even when there were bumps in the road, she, you know, she'd go back, she'd cry a little bit, she'd come back and fight again the next day. So um, you talk about a great story, and she's just not a great athlete, she's a great human being, that's why she's running and how rewarding was it for you to see her win that SEC title? Uh, very rewarding. I mean, I, I'm not going to you know, make up stuff. I, I teared up a little bit. I did. Because you know, I, I was there in the trenches with her. And I, I remember the days when, you know, she was afraid she couldn't do it again. I remember the days, even now, you know, she still has those moments where when the hurdles start rushing up on her, it's a little scary. So, you know, very, very satisfying and very emotional time for all of us. Well, let's shift over to the men now. You get a powerful squad here, and we knew it at SECs that you were more built for the national championship. You know, what's been your message to your team coming into these championships? I'm going to bore you again. Uh, it's, just, <laughs> it's the same message, man. I mean, like, we have to be who we are. And, I, and we talk about this a lot. You can't do anything about the other team. You know, I don't, I can't pay somebody to go out and trip with these things from, you know, from me to you or, you know, block the rest of the guys. I mean, the bottom line is we have to go and do our job. and you know, put some points up on the board at the end of the day. You know, like, like Mike said, you maximize your score of opportunities, and at the end of the day, you hope they're better than everybody else. That's all you can do, to be honest with you. Lara Overton with ESPN. Coach Johnson, for you, coming off of the team victory at SECs, what do you have to adapt to also put your team in a position to, from a team perspective, be in contention on that side? Because conference championship and national championship, Winning comes two different ways in terms of how the points have to stack out. Well, I, I think we have a complete team, and I just think that the, the young ladies have done a fantastic job in preparation for that. I don't think we change much. I just think that we focus on what we can do and what we do best, and, and leave the rest you know, for, for everybody to do whatever they need to do. Everybody comes here prepared. They want to do their best. We do too, and we feel like we prepared the young ladies to do that. And, but we are, we understand that there's a task at hand. And all these coaches up here and the rest of the coaches in the country have done a fantastic job getting their athletes ready. So we have a great amount of respect for them and what they've been able to do. But I think we got to focus on us. Uh, you know, we work together. we got to stay together. And, you know, we don't think everything is going to go our way. How are we going to overcome those things? If it doesn't go our way, that's more important for us right now. And that's our focus. And we've talked about that. We've prepared the young ladies for that. 
So it's really a matter of just going out executing, having a great time, understanding that, hey, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. This, this team is never going to be the same again because people graduate, they move on, whatever the case may be. So let's enjoy each other right now. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy Boston. Enjoy this fantastic facility that we have here and the opportunity that God has presented us. And let's go ahead and have some fun. For Chris, I'm Evan. You have so many kids in one event group. How do you make sure that they are building each other up and they're not competing every day and wearing each other out? Well, I got to adjust for that. Uh, <laughs> so, all in all, it's it's a competitive group. These young ladies are competitive. They understand each other. They train with each other each and every day. So we just tell them, hey, we're going to give you the race plan that best fits you. You're going to have to go out and execute that, and the chips fall away. Okay, we want all of you to win. We understand that that can't happen, but we're preparing them for each and every <coughs> individual in that event group to go out and win. And whatever happens, whoever executes the best on that day, in that moment, is going to be able to be the champion. But we can't, you know, overlook anyone that's in that race. We're top 16 in the country. Anything can happen, and things have strange things have happened. So. We got to get them prepared, not just to focus on themselves, but everyone else. But let's 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 dial it in. Let's go out there and take care of business. When you talk about race plan with uh, the, you know some of your athletes and changing those race plans, everybody seems a little bit more fit this season. If, if that's even possible from last season, especially Amber Anning. Um, you know she ran re really even races in the last couple of years, and now she's going out harder. Was that? something you guys were thinking about changing? Is that something she did? Is that something you guys talked about? Well, I think she got fitter, she got leaner, and she understand the race a little bit better. As time goes by, as, as any athlete knows, they start to understand what the race requires. And if you want to run fast, there's certain things that you have to do. And to get faster is one. We, we run track, so obviously we want to run fast. So you have to get faster in doing that. And I think the staff and the strength coach <laughs> And, and Boogie being there has helped address some of those things that we didn't quite do enough of in the past. And now that you, you kind of see the collaboration working to the betterment of the student athlete. Anderson Emerald here again. Um, just a question for my colleague. So throughout, it seems like decades at this point, you've had so much diversity across all the events. You just call me up. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have a lot of experience, um, but I mean, Florida, <laughs> Florida has so much diversity across all the different events. So I'm curious how you've been able to hone in on making sure everyone can focus on their individual events, but then come together as a team to support each other as it comes to these champions. Yeah, I you know, and Chris alluded to a little bit too. You know, none of us up here can do this by ourselves. You know, we have, I have a great staff, and I lean on them a lot. And we talk a lot about the diversity that you're talking about. It's always been kind of a dream of mine to have better distance training. I've got a coach now that's kind of honed in on that and it's very helpful. And at the end of the day, when we're recruiting these athletes that sit in their living room, we, we sell them on a dream. We sell them on a path to success. And when they get on our campus, it's our job to, to lead them down that path. So right now, we're in a very unique situation where we, we're brought based on both sides. And, and honestly, that's, the, that's been the plan for a while. We plan to keep it going. Um, you all have potential Olympians on your team. Um, you know, they're going to be looking at a number of athletes on each one of your squads that's going to compete certainly in July and maybe maybe into August. Um, you know, how do you, how do you balance what they're doing here during the season, but also have keep in mind that, you know, there's, there might be some bigger races at, at the end of the year. Coaches, you know, you've done more than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that it's experience. So this is our first rodeo, and, and the staff is very, very important in that. Obviously, uh, Taylor ran in the Olympics, and Boogie's coach, a, a number of athletes that's been Olympians and Olympic champs and so forth and so on. So the experience plays the biggest factor in, in doing it. And it's obviously, it's been done before. And we watched Mike go around the track and get Grant to do all these fantastic things through a collegiate season, as, as well as a world championship and or Olympic season. So there are great examples there on my staff and, and within the conference. And obviously, we know what kids have the ability, if you will, to have to last that long and endure that type of rigor, rigorous uh, track schedule. So we prepare them. We're training them to get ready to do that. But we understand the assignment as we go through the NCAA process that this is what's most important. And we will prepare them. That probably kind of starts in the fall 
it kind of carries over from season to season. And they'll be ready, as they always are. And we got, we, we, we've been able to do it with great leadership and great examples uh, throughout our staff and throughout the country. I just want to piggyback on that a little bit. I think that um, it's important for people to know that you know, while we're competitors, like I don't know Mike very well, but I'm, I've been friends with the West for a long time. We've had conversations about training. I'm in, at some point in time every week, I've had a conversation, whether it be a text message or whatever, with Chris, with Woody, with Eddie Floriel, Mike Ford, Tim Hall. Like we all, we're all close, and we're, we're all competitive as well. So. You know, it's a situation where you know, we're pushing each other, you know, we're learning from each other, we're always trying to reinvent the wheel. And if you're a part of this group of people, it's, you know, that really is a little, little crazy sometimes, you know? So you, know, you think about those people I mentioned, and you had Daryl Anderson and Lonnie Green and, and that crew, man. It's just, we're all very competitive, we push each other to be great. And it's, it's just, you just can't exist in this space and not be a competitive human being. And that's, we're all very competitive. Yeah, I think one one thing getting specific that I try not to do is run anybody t over two weeks in a row. We don't run many people. If you're a 60, 200 guy, normally I'll run you a 60 one week and the 200 the next or that type thing, especially with those kids that are going to go postseason or go longer. Um, and I think all these guys do the same thing. We try not to over race uh, too much indoors, even though it's unbelievably hard. You got to qualify, uh, puts a lot of pressure. We have a little advantage. Chris does too, having a track, you know, and I think we can pick and choose how we do that. I think that helps a lot. Okay. The advantage I see in Olympic year uh, is that uh, our athletes come out of NCAA competition just knowing how to compete. Running fast is not the same as competing, and championships require you to compete. Um, I've seen so many years where pro athletes are, at least in my world, the distance world, Particularly with the new World Athletic Standards, they've become very good at time trial. Time trial is not the same as racing. And so NCAA athletes that had to claw tooth and nail to make finals and, and get through rounds at their conference meet and the regional meet, um, and then finally the national meet, man, they get in that situation at the USA meet and it's all they've known. Whereas pro athletes sometimes are in those situations and um, it's very different than what it's taken to get there in the first place. So um, of course it's a long year for NCAA athletes but I do see so many advantages uh, when it comes to competing. What you're about to see this weekend is the heart and soul of competing in our sport, um, and that, yeah, those guys are better than anyone at that when it comes to the Olympic trials for you guys So this question is for all four of you. So each of y'all have key transfers on your team this year. What approach did you guys take that really allows you guys to find those right pieces to benefit you guys coming into this weekend? The, the portal has changed everything. We said it would and, and it did. Um, when you have a strong culture in place, um, you sell people on that culture and the right people come in and um, certainly bring their individual flares to it, but um, they, they're focused on the right things when you have something strong in place. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with him. The transfer portal, of course, yeah, it has changed everything, uh, I think. Uh, we haven't done any different approach in all honesty, and I bet these guys have had the same problem. A uh, good problem is people are calling us, and I think uh, nearly every kid that we've had has, has reached out to us at least to show interest, and we were fighting with somebody else maybe for them, but uh, I think, yeah, all, all these people have great cultures in their program, and I think uh, kids are looking, when they're on the portal, they're looking for that. And we've been very fortunate to get some good kids. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Wes. The, the portal is just part of the recruiting process. And um, it's kind of a thing where, you know, in the fall, you're going hard after the high school of, of, of athletes out there. And, but you also know in the back of your mind, if you don't get everything you want in, there's a you know, portal a couple of days ago. It's, it's full already. So, um, the, and unfortunately for a lot of the portal athletes, there's never enough scholarships to, to take care of all the people in the portal. So you have to be careful. I think sometimes with uh, uh, Brooks Johnson, who's one of my mentors, has always said, is you know, getting a transfer athlete is like buying a used car, you just buy somebody else's problem. So you have to be careful who you bring into your program and how do they fit your culture. And I think that's important. But when it comes to the portal and NIL, it's just it's part of the world we live in. We better figure out how to deal with it. Well, <clears throat> my approach to the portal is we look at it as an opportunity. Some of these kids we might have recruited prior to and they chose another school and 
that's another opportunity. Guess what? It's, it's really when when the kids transfer in or we recruit the kids out of high school, it's really about a fit. Okay, so somewhere that they go to another school, be it good, bad, or different, it's not a fit. But when they come to Arkansas, we, we step down and we talk to them and say, this is what we do here. So if you don't want to do that or you're not willing to make some changes or sacrifices, if you want to call it that, but we don't really call it sacrifice, this is what it takes to be successful. And this is the way we're going to do it. And if you understand that and you wouldn't buy into that, then fantastic, okay? Uh, we're not going to build our program off of, of transfer kids, but we will take some kids that are going to come in and enhance our program and work hard and, and get out good. So I think it's one of those things that all these coaches basically eloquently said that, hey, it's a part of what we do now. And it's a part of recruiting. It's a part of building a program. But I think it, it shouldn't be the main stake in your program. It should really enhance what you already have because you need those high school kids. You need those four-year kids. They're going to be there because that is the culture of your program. And these kids are coming in, and they have to learn the culture and make some adjustments and changes so they can be successful. And I think it's a second chance for those kids to get it right. And I think most of the time they feel that, hey, they've messed up some sort of way, and now this is my second opportunity to start over. And guess what? We all make mistakes. And having the opportunity to do it over again, I think, puts the kid in the best position to be successful. Um, question, I guess, for the group is, and as well. Um, we're at the NCAA is here in Boston. It's like first time, I think, in many, many years that we've had NCAA indoors in the Northeast. It's usually been in Arkansas, Texas a and i I'm just curious if you find it as a benefit, the opportunity to, for your athletes to move around when it comes to these championships, or would you prefer it be at like one location, similar to like outdoors, we're very free from the end, or again? Uh, for me, and I can only speak for me, I like for it to move around a little bit. Obviously, coming here to Boston and, and being a part of this culture in this city, and obviously they've spent a ton of money in, in, in making this facility what it is, and you go out and look at it, it's beautiful. So it's exciting, I think it's exciting for the kids, it's exciting for the staff, and it's exciting for the sport to be able to bring it all around the country. What a big country we have, and, how selfish would it be just to keep it in one spot? And I think this helps grow the sport. And I think it's very important to move it around. And, and our kids are excited to be here. And, and obviously, it's a wonderful facility that more than likely we would never have an opportunity to compete in unless they have a national championship here. So we're looking forward to it. And we're excited about it. I, I kind of agree with Chris. I think that moving the meet around just enhances the student athlete experience. Um, we could be the Eugene, Oregon thing to death, but I, I have no desire to go to Eugene, Oregon every year, and I will keep saying that to somebody who listens. <laughs> At the end of the day, I just, I mean, we talk about the student at the experience and, you know, coming here, we'll be in Virginia next week, be next year, and then I think we've been in New Mexico, we've been in Arkansas, we've been in, in, in College Station. It's a great experience. All those cities offer something different. We've been in Birmingham, right? So I think that's, again, Part of what it's supposed to be. We don't have the national basketball championships that was every year, or football every year. Those guys get to experience stuff, and I think our track athletes deserve the same thing. Yeah, I totally agree with these guys. I'm right with you. I think the athlete experience is great. I get that opportunity. I wish, as Mike said, ditto about Oregon. I wish we could move around a little bit more. And when people ask me where we're running, I'm saying, well, I'm always at Oregon, I guess, because. But yeah, we go to Virginia Beach, we go back to Arkansas, you know, and, and we're, we're moving around indoors. I really like that. I think it's just such a great experience for our kids. Yeah, these guys all said it. Part of, part of being a college athlete is getting to, getting to see the country. It's so wonderful to have, uh, have our athletes here in Boston. I also think just for exposure for our sport, um, yeah, some little boy or little girl in the, in the crowd this weekend is going to say, that's what I want to do when I go to college, you know, and uh, that's just tremendous. Coach Smith, you were here earlier in the season. How, you know, how much of a benefit is that for you guys to open up your indoor season here, just down the just down the street, get a chance to come over here and look at the facility? Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you get on the road and travel and you know <laughs> lay down the template of how you're going to do this in a championship environment, it's huge, right? So we do a little you know dress rehearsal of what we're going to do, and uh, the guys are ready for it when they and actually you know the time comes. Okay. Uh, quick question for all four of you. What is the biggest piece of advice that you gave to your athletes heading into this weekend? <laughs> Championship environments, we, um, 
we tell them not to try to win, not to focus on outcomes, but just to compete, and then um, the outcomes are a byproduct of competing. Yeah, I mean, I said it a little bit earlier. They'll, they'll hear a lot tonight. I, I, I give my speech tonight, but uh, in the team meeting. But yeah, be who you are. Do what you did to get here. I believe it. Like on nearly all our marks, if they do their marks that they got coming in, then we'll be in the finals or we'll be on the top eight. But uh, yeah, and just what promises did you make yourself at the beginning of the year? You know, and, and you're at a championship. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. And for a lot of people, it's their last one, maybe their last one. So uh, let's, let's make hay with it. You know, I'll be honest with you, we haven't really talked about it, and we probably won't talk about it. You know, we, we start on day one back in the fall, and we, we, we talk about the process and how we're going to build the things. And I think when you get to this time of year, um, I know as a young coach, I made that mistake. You kind of talk to them too much, you tell them too much, and it kind of gets them, you know, start saying things you haven't been saying, so they think that you think there's something wrong. So my message is going to be what is fairly track. We're going to go out, we're going to warm up, we're going to put the blocks down and go run. That's, that's all we do. Uh, very, when we talk to the young ladies, it's very simple. Be confident in who you are, okay? And go out and execute. It's just as simple as that. We've started back in August, September, and we've been working towards this for a long time. So understand that you, if you got here, you're prepared, and, and you earned it, and it wasn't given. So be confident in who you are and the work that you put in, and let's go out and execute. That's, that's basically simple as it gets. Coach Hall, what's with the pink shirts on Thursday? Anything else? So you got to do this um, couple times? something that the ladies started a while back, and um, obviously no breast cancer awareness. And so earlier this fall, I think it was Nick Peterson decided he was going to wear pink shirt practice, and then all of a sudden the old men's team decided to join in. So every Thursday you come to the games when everybody's got a pink shirt. We just probably whistle on the road. Nice. And by the way, Boogie Johnson wants one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know that already today. We're going to save one of the other. <laughs> Size medium. <laughs> Parker, you didn't say mic drop. Parker, you asked most of the questions in the last session. Do you have any final questions for you guys? <laughs> I think you've had them here long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're ready to go. Hey. So gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll ask is, what would you share to stand for, for a quick photo. <laughs>